I wake. I write. I eat. Mm. I probably had more meals with you than my wife. I watch TV. Also? This is the place. This is where we live. This is my 20,000th day on Earth. This film does a rather clever thing, really, that it, re that it, that it um, reveals more than, than uh, I think has been revealed in anything about me before, um, but at the same time creates more m mystery by revealing that. I mean, it, there, there's, a, there's a, a kind of juggling act that happens in the film. Do you love performing still? I live for it. There's something that happens on stage where you are transported. Nick had started to work on his new record and he called and said, look, why don't you come into the studio with some cameras? Because no one's ever done that. Kind of right at the beginning, you know, when him and Warren are writing and it's very, very early days and normally they wouldn't let anyone anywhere near them with a camera. But because we've kind of got to know each other pretty well over the last few years and we're kind of you know, good at keeping out of the way and being low key. So Nick had said, come in and, and shoot some stuff, see what you get. And the stuff we got was just amazing, just absolutely flawed us that we were getting this kind of access um, to such a sort of intimate moment of creation. And so we just knew immediately we had to do something bigger. They suggested making a Nick Cave documentary and this was something I had no interest in doing whatsoever because to me a Nick Cave documentary meant telling this same story that gets told in all the editorials and biographies and that sort of thing that have been about me and that, that holds no interest. My story as such holds no interest to me, really. Um, so I kind of agreed to, to allow them to, to work at, at something as long as it was something that was different, um, something that the, that no one had seen before and they kind of went ahead and did this and I think produced something that was um, extraordinary. Really. There's a world I'm creating. A world full of monsters and heroes, good guys and bad guys. It's an absurd, crazy, violent world where people rage away and God actually exists. We had those two cycles that mm. play out in the film. One is the very simple cinematic structure of um, a day in the life. It, your audience knows where they're at. You know, you, you, it's a journey. You're going from one end of the day to the other. And then parallel to that, we have the creative cycle, the journey of a song from the moment that the lyrics pop into Nick's head or the melody begins to take form on the piano, all the way through demoing, rehearsals, and then onto the stage of the Sydney Opera House. We had an agreement to begin with that I would uh, allow myself to be kind of put through certain scenarios, um, which, quite frankly, I was extremely doubtful that it would be successful. Um, knowing that I, I could remove anything that I didn't like, you know. So when they wanted to film me waking up in the morning with my wife, this idea was kind of ludicrous to me. The idea of standing in front of a mirror half naked and, and looking at myself in the mirror also filled me with a certain amount of horror. But, you know, they, they, they filmed it in a mysterious sort of way and, and, it, and it worked. The opening scene of Nick waking up in bed really was well, as much as anything, a kind of in-joke for us, that it was kind of, you know, almost the most intimate moment you could share with someone is that moment where they wake up in the morning in bed with their wife and that we kind of start there and then immediately just run to somewhere completely different. As you get older, your world shrinks. Um, what you have to write about becomes less and less and the imagination becomes more and more important in a way. Um, a memory becomes more and more important. And, and I think this became the, the overarching theme because of that. Um, so it was kind of interesting to make a film where, it, a film that masqueraded as real life, as a day in the life of Nick Cave, but at the same time was completely fictitious. My biggest fear, I guess, 
is losing my memory. It does worry me at times that I'm not going to be able to continue to do what I do mm. um, and, and reach a place that I'm satisfied with. In the sense? Because memory is what we are. You know, and I think that your very soul and your very reason to be alive is tied up in memory. Having known Nick for a period of time and having worked together in the past really taught us that we knew from the very beginning was that you have to hold Nick's attention. If he gets bored, you lose him and suddenly you have a very different Nick. So you've got to work quickly. I don't like acting. I can't, there's nothing worse than sitting around on a set waiting to do your thing and all of that sort of stuff. And to be doing that in a film that's about yourself uh, is even more hideous. But really, mostly, I wanted to. I wanted some of the live stuff that they, you know, the, some of the performances of the songs, some of that rehearsal stuff. Um, you know, I love that stuff. That was really natural. That was really true. So much more was in those performances than you can ever get in a video. We used the music as a way of enhancing some of the kind of beats, the moments in the film to. Um, and to give you a break from, you know, endless philosophical thought and, and theory and, and, or storytelling. For me, there's a kind of psychodrama that goes on between singular people in the front row that becomes very important in the, in the telling of the, the narratives of the songs. I get a huge amount of energy from... From picking up singular... People and terrifying them. Really? Do you make it your mission to terrify Well, them? it's that kind of um, mixture of awe and terror that you can get from one person or a small group of people that mm. is that is really, um, that gives a huge amount of uh, energy to, to kind of transform yourself. I hadn't seen Kylie in years, actually. Um, it, it kind of really brought home to me how those sort of friendships can get lost um, just because of how busy you are and life and all that sort of stuff. You know, the, myth the mythology is the story. I think that's the thing, you know, the, the conceit that somehow that you can get behind the mask of a rock star is kind of bizarre when you think about it too much because, you know, a rock star, as Nick says in the film, if they're any good, the mask is gone. There is no mask. They are the thing that they've created. There's no... There's no mask to take away, you know. Nick spent, I mean, 35 years that we know of in public creating the, the, the character that is Nick Cave and, you know, who knows how many years in his bedroom as a teenager before then. And he is the thing that he's created. My last will and testament. OK, it seems like I wanted all my money, which was nothing, I would say, at that time to go to the Nick Cave Memorial Museum. <laughs> a small but adequate room or rooms will serve as the Nick Cave Memorial Museum. Do you remember writing it? No. And it was, 87 was a, was a, uh, uh, it was a difficult year to remember, 87. So just 80 anything was did it difficult to remember. You could make this film about anybody's creative process. I don't think you'd make as good a film um, with anybody else. I don't think that, yeah, anybody else would be quite so um, strange and and yet profound. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being involved in films, other films, and there's always the core idea, and the core, the core idea, the pure idea, uh, very rarely gets realised. Filmmaking seems to be, to me at least, a form of massive compromise. Um, and I was really struck by how close the film is to, to the original idea. It's something else when you go and see a film and you can see that the artist's vision has been realised and, and, it, and it hasn't been compromised and, it, and it, it makes it through to the end and the credits come up and you think, OK, that guy, that, that, that guy, that girl or whoever has made a film uh, that is true to what they, they want. Or you get that feeling. And, and, and that's the feeling I got from, from um, 20,000 pounds. <laughs>